This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Are battery electric trucks really that much better for the environment than diesel trucks? A new American Transportation Research Institute study takes a look. Hey everybody, welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode from the editors here at CCJ. As always, I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side is Matt Cole. There's been a big push in the trucking industry in recent years towards zero emission trucks, particularly battery electric trucks, to help reduce the industry's carbon footprint. When considering on-road performance, alternative powertrain vehicles like battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell electric far outshine the traditional diesel internal combustion engine. When you take the full life cycle of the trucks into consideration, though, the environmental benefits of these alternative powertrain trucks may not be as beneficial to the environment as previously believed. We spoke once again with Dan Murray, Senior Vice President with the American Transportation Research Institute, who talked about the results of research released earlier this month that analyzed carbon dioxide impacts of diesel, battery electric, and hydrogen fuel cell electric trucks over their life cycle. You know, everything, Matt, as you know, comes through a research advisory committee. Um, This was a a top priority uh, a a full year ago, uh, and it was probably identified as a priority by a research advisory committee. We nickname it that the rack, of course, um, because there's so much sensational headlines about the future being with electric vehicles. Even our friend Elon Musk was talking about an electric truck that would get 650 miles per trip, per charge. And our rack essentially said, we need to understand what the genesis of this movement is. And in most cases, uh, it's clearly environmental benefits climate change, et cetera, but also what are the operational cost implications? And then what are the environmental benefits? So all of that sort of was discussed and ultimately they voted on and prioritized two different electric truck related uh, research studies. One is the life cycle emissions impact, which is the report we're discussing today. The other one's equally interesting, which is understanding the electric infrastructure requirements for electric vehicles. Essentially, does this country produce enough electricity to power a fleet of 340 million vehicles, you know, of those anywhere from 3 million to 10 million freight trucks? Uh, And the answer is going to be very, very speculative and skeptics might say questionable, but that research is underway. We did release, as you know, a comparison report this week looking at a baseline diesel truck today and the full life cycle, uh, we'll call it CO2 production, carbon dioxide production uh, from production of that diesel truck through the operations and consumption of the fuel and the production of the fuel through the life cycle disposal. And then we compared that to the same sort of methodology of electric trucks and then ultimately hydrogen fuel cell trucks. And, The results are really quite surprising. People who sort of view electric trucks as being a panacea and most importantly, truly, you know, CO2 um, eliminated in the process are going to be very, very surprised and probably disappointed. Atri used the publicly available GREEP model from the Department of Energy that simulates the energy use and emissions output of various vehicles and fuel combinations to figure out the CO2 emissions of each vehicle type over their life cycle from production to operation to disposal. There are a lot of ways to approach this, and it was most important for us to maintain credibility and transparency that we developed a methodology that was sort of foolproof and beyond reproach. Uh, And so ultimately what we did is we used a publicly available model uh, developed by Argonne National Lab, which is part of the Department of Energy, and it's called the GREET model for short. It it, it GREET stands for something. Um, And it ultimately calculates CO2 production for key steps in the development of vehicles and trucks. And so we used the GREET model, inputted the uh, requirements of a diesel truck, inputted the requirements of electric, hydrogen fuel cell trucks. We also looked at other variations of that. We looked at, as you know, renewable diesel uh, and variations of hydrogen production. Today, it's produced, believe it or not, primarily by petroleum fuels. You take natural gas and you use that to call out the hydrogen. But there are ways of producing much, much cleaner hydrogen fuel using solar power. And we can talk about that in a minute. But the GREET model gave us outputs to say, at every step of the way, using these three primary truck types, 
what is the CO2 production? And that was sort of the basis of our analysis. While battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell trucks certainly produce less CO2 emissions on the roads than diesel trucks, diesels are actually the cleanest of the three trucks to produce. But before we hear more from Dan, let's hear from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its after-treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. But Dello 600 ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. And what we discovered is that an internal combustion engine truck, which we just call the ICE truck, traditional truck today, is about 74,000 pounds of CO2 emissions. And that's going to seem like a huge number, 74,000 pounds of CO2 emissions per truck. But juxtapose that with a battery electric truck, almost 500,000 pounds of CO2 emissions, much of that related to the mining and production of the battery itself. So, we have a, a, a vehicle which a lot of folks in the marketplace are calling zero emissions, zero tailpipe emissions. And that might be true when, when you're on the road, but to get to the road, a battery electric truck is going to cost, produce, I should say, almost six times the CO2 as a traditional truck. And even a hydrogen electric cell truck, which I'm intrigued with, I will confess, is still you know, almost, but not quite twice the CO2 production as a traditional diesel truck. So on the production side, if we don't find ways of developing more sustainable, lower polluting manufacturing processes, the battery electric truck at the end of the day, at the production level at least, is going to be a black eye on the face of the industry in terms of, you know, trying to do the right thing and trying to affect positive changes in the climate. So the production d d clearly identified battery electric trucks being six times more polluting than a traditional diesel. When looking at the operational life of three different powertrains, Atri calculated the emissions of each over 1 million miles. When you get into the operations, which includes, by the way, the production of the fuel. So I, you know, what does it cost to produce a gallon of diesel? or a kilowatt of electricity, or you know, a, a, a kilogram of, of hydrogen, for instance, we then looked at that operation uh, aspect. And, and again, we saw some pretty substantial differences, but here finally, the battery electric and the hydrogen fuel started to show their, their shining face, I'll say. No question, and by the way, the one of the toughest things was to essentially convert energy so that, that a, a gallon of diesel looked like the equivalent to a you know, kilowatt or a kilogram. But there's no question the traditional diesel, you know, if that's 100% of all costs, a battery electric was about 43% lower in terms of producing electricity and operating electric truck. And on hydrogen fuel was 46% lower in terms of producing hydrogen and operating the hydrogen fuel truck. So this is where on the road, we start to see some improvements in the bat electric truck, I should say, in the hydrogen truck, if I can nickname them that. From the carrier perspective or the truck driver perspective, how long are these batteries going to last, these lithium batteries in the electric truck? Well, at least anecdotally, it appears that they'll last between four and seven years, probably closer to the low end of that. That means at the end of four to seven years, you have to switch out the full regimen of batteries. Well, it turns out that these 15 to 17,000 pounds of lithium batteries are probably going to cost between 85,000 
and $140,000 for the batteries to replace them. So every four to seven years, you're going to be spending another, say, eighty-five to one hundred forty thousand dollars to switch out the batteries. That's a very expensive proposition to build into your depreciation schedules, your turnover schedules, etc. Because nobody's going to want to buy, you know, your five-year-old electric truck when I know I'm on the cusp of adding another round to hundred thousand dollars. Atri also found there are significant CO2 emissions related to the recycling of lithium-ion batteries that diesel and hydrogen fuel cell trucks do not have. Well, we, we sort of uh, created a placeholder for the, the, the physical vehicle itself, the truck itself. And we said, well, it's going to generate the same amount of CO2 pollution to basically break down and recycle the physical truck, whether it's a, a battery electric, hydrogen, or diesel. But then obviously there's components that are going to differ substantially. And using the GREET model, we found out that while there is no lithium battery recycling cost to hydrogen and diesel, of course, you are going to generate almost 50,000 pounds of CO2 to dispose of a lithium ion battery. The worst part of it is if you're really into environmental sustainability, of all the major components of a lithium battery, the major components being nickel, cobalt, and lithium, the only material there that can be recycled is nickel. We can't recycle today cobalt and lithium. There's, just, there's not a marketplace and there's also not a scientific mechanism for doing it effectively. So those are still going to get disposed of in landfills and wherever else. We don't know. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still going to cost almost 50,000 pounds of CO2 to dispose of a, an electric truck, whereas the total for a regular diesel truck is 2,200 pounds of CO2. A lot of numbers there, but at the end of the day, what we're saying is an electric truck is going to cost anywhere from, well, let's just resign ourselves to hundreds of times more in terms of pollution uh, than a, a traditional diesel truck would be. So again, the, we, we have a bad habit, Matt, of not looking at life cycle implications. We look at a mile on the road and say, geez, these electric vehicles are awesome, aren't they? And they are. Um, it's to get to the road and to get off the road where the real world costs start to add up dramatically. Looking at the trucks that are available today, Atri found that electric trucks only provide about a 30% reduction in CO2 emissions over their life cycle compared to a diesel truck. Hydrogen fuel cells were a little bit better with around 45% fewer CO2 emissions. Down the road, Atri found that hydrogen fuel cell trucks will be by far the cleanest, surprisingly followed by diesel trucks that use renewable diesel fuel. If you look at the whole schematic of vehicles we analyzed, which again are the three major ones, but we also investigated where alternative energy sources are going, wind, solar, etc. And over time, those alt energy sources are going to increase. We also looked at diesel engines that use renewable diesel. And the power of that is that we don't change the truck and we don't change the fuel distribution system, which is essentially non-existent today for electricity and hydrogen. And we found out that a battery electric truck produces really only about 70% of a diesel truck, which means there's a 30% benefit there. If you get into a regular hydrogen truck today, which is going to generate hydrogen from, from natural gas, um, the benefit increases to about 45% less CO2 than a diesel truck. If you go all the way to 2050, long, long after you and I retired, you're going to see that a, a battery electric truck then, which will rely much more on solar and wind, will really be about half of what a diesel truck is today. Where I'm really intrigued is that if we use a traditional diesel truck with renewable diesel, which is not well captured, uh, well accessible in the marketplace today, and much of it is imported uh, from other countries, we're down to a diesel truck with renewable fuel only being a third of what a diesel truck is today. And frankly, the second cleanest truck that will be available in the future is a, is a diesel truck using renewable diesel. And then, of course, the very best, very cleanest truck out there will be a hydrogen fuel cell truck that takes advantage of electricity generated from wind and solar. So in other words, I'll produce hydrogen with electricity instead of natural gas, and I'll produce the electricity with solar 
and wind and other alternative energy, then you get a truck that is really less than 10% CO2 pollution of a diesel truck today. That's a lot of numbers. And really the only two things you need to know is the cleanest truck we're gonna have out there is gonna be hydrogen fuel cell, which begs the question, are electric trucks just a stepping stone for us to get to the best truck out there, which is gonna be hydrogen? And, and is an electric truck the best stepping stone? When a, when a diesel engine running on renewable fuel is way cleaner than an electric truck. So we're not trying to muddy the water here. We're just trying to get the realities out there so that if we're really committed to climate change, sustainability, and better air quality, certainly in the, the US, we have to have all the data. And the data says hydrogen is better and renewable diesel engines are better than electric trucks by a great deal. Dan noted a couple of factors that fleets should keep in mind when it comes to electric trucks, with the biggest being the cost and the return on that investment. Also of note, he said, is the impact electric trucks could have on the industry's driver shortage. I think the two most important things, I'm, I'm going to throw in a third. The two most important things now is what is the cost and what is the payback? And the cost of these vehicles using all kinds of transparent empirical data is they're going to be at least $300,000, probably closer to $400,000 when you look at all the components that are going to go into an electric truck. Now, what's the ROI or the payback? Well, now I'm going to have to go to my shipper customers and say, well, my, my truck is now more than twice as expensive and I'm going to need to get better pricing. And the shipper is going to say, well, what do I get from that? And I'm going to have to say, unfortunately, well, instead of driving five or six or 700 miles on a, on a single tank of diesel, I'm going to have to stop every 150 miles to every 200 miles to stop and charge. So you're not going to get the same schedule. And on top of that, the weight of the lithium batteries are going to be somewhere safely between 15,000 pounds and 17,000 pounds. Well, I might get an exemption today, Matt, for an APU of 2,500. That still leaves me losing close to 15,000 pounds of revenue weight. So my message is going to be, it's going to cost you substantially more to move your goods substantially shorter distances, and I'm not going to be able to move as much. Where I'm really concerned, Matt, is the driver shortage issue. As you know, in our top industry issues report, driver shortage, number one issue, four years in a row. If I'm going to recruit drivers who are primarily paid by the mile, how am I going to tell them Instead of getting paid for six or 700 miles per trip, you're going to stop every 150 miles to 200 miles and charge your truck up again. And by the way, you won't get paid for that. I don't think this is going to help the driver shortage issue. So again, this is the stuff where the technology and the engineering uh, hasn't really caught up yet with the reality of the operations and the regulations that exist in our industry. And that's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. And as always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel. And if you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call at 404-491-1380. And until next week, everybody stay safe.